Greetings and salutations. Charlton66 here again um, with a video concerning. I talked earlier about how I got into comics and I would do a video about that. But first of all, thanks to everyone who's been viewing and subscribing and making comments to my videos. It validates, I guess, you know, um, what I'm doing. Um, and it, uh, it's helpful to some people, so that's a, that's a good thing. But I do appreciate all the comments and, and of course, the subscriptions and uh, and the views of people have uh, have on my videos. And uh, I do really really appreciate that. Also, happy Fourth of July to everyone. Have a safe and uh, happy holiday. Enjoy the day today. So I figured I'd take a few minutes to make a video about the origins of my comic book experience. As a lot of people, I guess, not really, I can't say 100% sure, but from watching videos and talking to other collectors and fans, my friends who I'm still friends with after 40 years of us collecting and reading comics together, um, it's always a, it's always set in stages how we get into comic books. Be it, you know, your first exposure to a comic book, usually through a relative, uh, uh, a close family member, um, maybe at a barber shop like I did, and then there's the exposure, and then there is the idea that this is what you want to read and collect and do, and you will start buying comic books when you start getting your own money and able to go out on your own and venture out to the wilderness and um, and find those comic books. Um, for me, it was just like that. I have an expo had an exposure probably when I was really probably four or five years old. Um, was at a barber shop, and then it was a comic, older comic book. Didn't know anything about comic books, but um, I remember the issue vividly. Um, it was Smokey from Dell Comics, and it was my grandfather from downtown Indianapolis. Took me to a barber shop, and they had old comics and 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 whatnot there. Um, I was born in '66, so this is the same year this comic book came out, Smokey. Um, so this had to have been around 1969, 1970 time frame. But anyway, saw the comic book. I love the cover. And, and, and um, my grandfather read some of it to me until we had, to our, it was our turn to sit in the barber chair. And then, but it stuck with me. I vividly remember that. And then I would see comic books here, here and there with older family members. And then finally, um, when I had my own money, it was um, Marvel 2 and 1, number 13, The Thing and Power Man. Bought that with my own money, it was a 25 cent issue. Then with that, I bought a pack of bottle caps, the candy bottle caps. So it was at the Hook Stroke store in, in, in Indiana. And to this day, I can't eat, eat bottle caps without thinking about that day. It resonates, it, it's, it's there. Um, I'll eat them and I'll know exactly where I was at that time and every time I read that that issue uh, it was my very first comic book I bought on my own so obviously um, all those years ago with first reading Smokey I could not get that issue obviously so I went out and I found the issue I'm talking about right here Smokey it's from a movie 19 it's not very it's not very exciting I realized that but um, uh, there was a comic book that I remember vividly to this day that was in that barbershop. And along with, with this issue, and I know it's not very exciting, um, artwork goes, but I was able to track down a page of artwork from that issue. And I had it matted and framed up here. Again, like I said, it's not very exciting, but it is a page from that comic book that... Um, that my very first comic book that I vividly remember um, being read to me and then looking at the picture. So right there, it's I'm pretty sure I'm 99.9% 9% sure it's Jack Sparling doing the artwork. Um, obviously, Dale never gave credits to, uh, to the artist, but I'm pretty sure. And this is the page right here that I have um, right there. So like I said, it's not a very exciting page. But it's exciting nonetheless because it is of my first comic book that I remember actually holding in my hands and being read to me and actually enjoying what the medium was. 
um, even at a young age, it was pretty exciting to see those pictures and look at the pictures and able to know it's telling the story. I was able to pick up some of the words, but my grandfather read some of it to me and and we left that day, comic book state stayed there and I left that day. So onward to a little bit years later in, in my life where I told you I was able to get, this is not the original one that I bought, but I don't have, obviously it's been lost to, to the ages, but this was the Marvel 2 and one that I was very first comic I remember buying on my own with that pack of bottle caps. And onward with the theme of Smokey, um, Obviously, I would love to have artwork from this comic book. Um, so I couldn't ever afford. I've seen the, this page for sale, the cover, years and years ago. Um, um, couldn't afford it, but I really wanted it. And I figured, why not go to the source? And um, anyone who's read comic books in the 70s and 80s knows who Ron Wilson is. The guy was the mainstay, the staple of really of, of most Marvel comic books. Back in the 70s and the 80s, it was like you can pick up any comic book and Ron Wilson's name is some, somewhere there, be it a cover, the interior art, or what have you. So I went to the source and I was able to get a, a re-imaging or a redo of that cover to Marvel 2 and 1, number 13. Again, Ron Wilson has not lost his touch. Um, I think I got this probably in... 07, 08 time frame, but I'm very happy to have it, although it's not the original cover, to me it's just as good um, to ha of having that, and every time I see it on my wall, I think about those days, and what, you know, what got me started in the, in, in the hobby, so, again, right there, Marvel 2 and 1, number 13, the cover, again, it's not the original cover, but Ron Wilson redid the cover, and there it is, and he's another artist that if you go to a show, um, he's he's there. If he's there, go see him, talk to him. His artwork is he's so good, such a nice guy, and a lot of his artwork you can get relatively inexpensive. He's you know he's very humble about what he does, and um, and to talking to him, you get a lot of information from him, and he's got always has sketches and covers covers that he's redone. A lot of things going on at his table and again you can walk right right up to his table sadly walk right up to his table there's no line or anything like that not to say he's not popular because he does get a flow of people don't get me wrong there's still fans of Ron Ron Wilson like I said anyone any one of us here who's read comic books who collects comic books from the 70s and the 80s know Ron Wilson same thing with Keith Pollard I don't know if I say his last name right Pollard or Pollard um, He's another one that was always around during the 70s and the 80s. And luckily, um, this year's Baltimore Comic Con, they're both are going to be there, which I think is phenomenal. And hopefully, usually when they do a show together, they're side by side, working together and, um, and signing comics, doing sketches and whatnot. So really looking forward to this year's Baltimore show, um, just to see Ron Wilson again, but also knowing Keith Polder will be there. Again, um, that's what got me into the this is the or the origin of Charlton sixty six and the way of you know you have me my segue into comic books with Smokey and um, Marvel two and one thirteen and funny enough um, the uh, the cover artist of Smokey George Gross he um, would go would later on start doing the Avenger paperback covers the pulp hero of the Avenger um, after about maybe I'm thinking that seventh or eighth novels into the series which I collected as a kid and I still read them in fact I'm reading one right, right now um, he did the cover art so I thought it was kind of was kind of cool when I did finally find Smokey and I saw the the signature right here I don't think it's going to show up here or not so I have signature right there and if you see any Avenger paperback books um, the last 25 or so Avenger paperback books, you'll see that signature on, on, on those covers. So I thought that was kind of cool. Kind of like how everything comes together, the full circle, you know. Um, he did that cover and then enjoying the Pulp Heroes and, the, and, and getting the Avenger paperbacks. And there is a signature right there. So I thought that was kind of cool. But anyway, thanks again for, for viewing my video. And uh, 
hope you found it somewhat informative and interesting enough. Um, but uh, thanks again for everyone who views and subscribes and uh, and um, gives her comments. I do read them. I comment on every comment that comes up on, on my videos. And again, I do appreciate everything. And um, have a safe and happy 4th and enjoy your holiday. Thank you for viewing and subscribing.